When the sun sets and the day is over, you can still hear the sounds of the steam train passing through the hills of Sodor during the night. This is the sound of the post train. Every evening, an engine from the other railway brings in special coaches filled with parcels, newspapers, and letters to the junction. One of the Fat Controller's engines takes it onto the big station, where it's taken to villages and towns beyond. It's almost as loved by the engines as the Wild Norwester, but none enjoyed it as much as James. He was set to take it that afternoon, and he was telling everyone, It's a most important job, James told everyone. The others took no notice, so James continued, I pity engines like you, Simon. Why? Simon replied flatly. You're only a little shunter, James went on. You never get the prestige of taking such a special train like us big engines. I'm sure I'd make the headlines if people saw me. Simon began to grow annoyed. I'm not one for theatrics and stardom. Perhaps if I look like a tomato sauce bottle like you do, I too would have to prove myself constantly. During the day, the heat began to rise. The engines began to feel hot and bothered, and by midday, the heat became unbearable. The engines began to grumble. That evening, James prepared to set off for the post train, while Simon prepared the yard for the next morning during the night. He had just finished arranging the trains when the signalman ran up to him. You'll need to meet James with the line. His brake pipes failed. We're the only engine steam. Quickly! Say no more, said Simon. And he raced up the line to meet James. James met him at the station, looking most embarrassed. I knew the heat would get to you, James, but I didn't realize it would be this embarrassing. James took no notice. He just looked at his buffers crossly. Simon shunted him out of the way, and prepared to take the train onto the big station. Simon was coupled to the train, and jolted the vans off into motion, sparks leaping from his funnel. Good grief, Simon said to himself, it's heavier than it looks. But the weight was the least of his problems. As he approached the next station, one spark too many shot out from the funnel, landing on the trackside and setting the dry grass ablaze. Simon's guard, looking out the window, saw this, and blew the whistle as loud as he could. Simon's driver leaned out to see what was wrong. Glory! he called, and applied the brakes. Simon screeched to a stop. Run to the station get the fire buckets! Quickly! said the driver. The fireman did so, but found the buckets nearly empty. They must have evaporated in the heat! The fire was growing, and Simon was worried. We'll use the water from his tanks! said the driver. The fireman climbed up to Simon's footplate, filled the buckets, and threw them onto the fire, beginning to pacify it. Soon, the fire brigade arrived, and the fire was put out. Luckily, no damage had been dealt. When the sun began to rise, Boko arrived to pick up Simon in the mail train. Simon said nothing. He just wanted to return to the yard, hoping nobody had heard of his incident. Don't you worry, laughed Boko. I won't tell a soul. Simon was lucky to find that nobody had heard of his incident, and he spent the next day arranging trains without issue. But when Simon's driver arrived with the newspaper the next morning, he was in stitches. Look, Simon! You made it to the front page news! Simon was aghast. Engines causes trackside blaze, he said aloud. The engine's water had been used to put out the fire. All the engines were in fits of laughter, looking at Simon. I thought I'd be making headlines, said James, but I suppose you beat me to the punch. Simon said nothing. He just left for the yard, trying to stay on scene.